So uh, basically, if you read the chapter 10 carefully, you understand everything. But I'm going to basically repeat what is written in chapter 10 so that you get good feeling for what uh, bipolar junction transistor is. Okay? So bipolar junction transistor is simply connection of P plus N P or N plus P N three terminal device. And we make this thickness thin, very thin. In fact, this is going to be much thinner than minority carrier diffusion length. You're going to see this is thinner than minority carrier diffusion length so that what happened is that um, the band, uh, so, so that in the textbook, everything was, uh, everything was explained in terms of PNP diode, a uh, transistor. Here in the first part, I'm going to use this as an example and then move on to the explanation of a uh, textbook and follow it um, um, faithfully. So PNP device, you know that if you have PNP device, you, what you have is the following. Band gap looks like this. Right? Or for the time being, I just say N, N, NPN device. Sorry, NPN device. So this is, this is, forget about the top, but I'm going to just talk, concentrate on this part. And then we have lots of electron here. Some hole. Electron here, some hole, and what we do is the following: we are going to put we are going to put forward bias forward bias to this region to inject electron to inject electron into this region. Okay. Electron injection. Right? However, however, this thickness this thickness is thinner than diffusion length of electron. So here in P type, P, P region, in, in P region, P type region, uh, electron is a minority. carrier. And thickness is thinner than minority minority carrier diffusion length. What it means is that most of the electron emitted into this region actually diffuse to this part. And once electron reaches this part, what happens once electron reaches this part? Electron will just fall down into 
and region, right? So even though this is forward bias, there's hardly any electron going out. No, hardly any electron going out. They, this bias is used to inject electron into this thin region. But then electron reach, reaches this edge and then fall down into this region. Okay? And this is actually taken out. with a bias that looks like this. So this is a, this is a typical, um, typical operation. Hmm? And also you can see in, the, in, the, in, the, in this diagram that there are some holes, there are some holes that falls into this region from this way. So some electron coming in go out, very little, or current due to hole occurs. And roughly speaking, when you have one, when you have one electron coming out, one electron coming out, you have 100 electron going this way. So the ratio is one, ratio of number of electron going this way and current going this way is 100 to 1. So if this is 200, this becomes 2, right? the ratio is preserved. So this is really the amplifier. By, by controlling how much current is coming out here, you get 100 times more current going this way. So this is used for, you know, for example, transistor radio. You have radio wave coming in, and you get small signal from the radio, but then you get large output going out this way to the speaker. It's amplifier. So in order to explain this uh, device, we will have to, we will have to um, basically define a few things. So, we are going to talk about P, N, P uh, di uh, transistor, and in this case, emitter, base, collector, Of form P plus N P. Okay? And this is emitter, this is collector, and this is base. And such device is actually symbol by normal and this this arrow is important this arrow is important arrow going into base this is pnp pnp arrow this is pnp arrow going out of the base That's NPP, NPM. And if I define, so if I define, this is IE, emitter current, 
emitter current. And if I define this is IC, collector current. And if there's any current going out this way, that's base current. And usually here, IE, of course, by definition, IE is I sub C plus I sub B. And I have to also define plus, this is minus, that's a base voltage, and also, so that's a, that's a emitter, a voltage between emitter and base, and this is the voltage between collector and base, and this is voltage between emitter and collector, then V EB plus B VBC plus VCE equals zero. And very often, very often, P and P diode is used in so-called common emitter mode. And this is IB, and this is base, and this is IC, and this is collector, and this is emitter. Okay. And this is input. I call it, we call it common emitter because this V, EB, is input and this V E sub E C is output. And you can you can see in text figure 10.4 B for common emitter that if you plot I sub C versus V E C what you get is the following for um, larger I B. Okay? Sorry, I should I should actually probably write down like this. This is I C. So V E C is here. And for larger IB, we get larger collector current, right? So larger, I, larger the input current, and there's, there's actually amplification because you get large collector current. We're talking about, for example, this is, let's say this in a textbook, this is 40 microamp IB. And this level is about, uh, about 14 milliamp 
right? So we're talking about input current of 40 microamp and output current of 40 milliamp. And depending on input current, you get different output, but you can see that the order of the current is, you know, basically uh, 100 times or so larger. So that's amplifier. And in the textbook of table 10.1, they talk about different, different biasing mode. And here we call active, mostly active biasing is used and for active biasing, for active biasing, emitter base junction is forward and collector base junction is reverse. So what that means is that emitter base is forward. This part is forward. And this part is reverse. This is forward bias forward bias here and reverse bias here. So that's, a, that's, a, that's the uh, commonly used biasing mode. There are four combinations. Forward, 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 reverse, re reverse, forward, reverse, reverse. So in table 10.1, table there are four combinations listed, but uh, for the time being, uh, we are going to uh, concentrate on um, this active biasing mode. We have P plus N and actually larger larger MP device. This is depletion region. This is depletion region. Now you know that actual, actual PN junction, junction, actual BN junction border is somewhere here close to the P side, right? Because it's a P plus N. So when this is P plus N, the actual border between P N is closer to P plus in a, in a depletion region. And here, this is, um, let's say, somewhere, somewhere in between. And when you have such So here the border is here and there's a depletion region width and then there's actually a depletion region between here and there. That's a depletion region. And then we have flat part. And this is frame level. Frame level. Actually, I should actually draw frame level even closer. Frame level here.
so Fermi level is very close to valence band because it's P plus. Here it's only P instead of P plus. So the Fermi level is far away from, a little farther away from the valence band. And here the Fermi level is closer to conduction band because it's an it's a, it's a n-type region. And then, with the active biasing, with the active biasing, we are, we are with the active biasing, we are going to bring this down because we put forward bias between here. With the active biasing, we are going to place this down, and then uh, we are going to uh, uh, here we are we have reverse bias so that this will actually go up, right? So the, with the active biasing, it, it looks up, it appears that now I have to bring this it looks like this. So, so we have we have reduction of the uh, v, v active bias and then we have enlargement of the depletion region. Very small almost zero depletion region here. So with the, uh, this is active biasing. So with the active biasing, we, uh, we, reduce the, we reduce the difference between P and N because it's a forward bias here. And then we will increase the difference here because it's a reverse bias here. And hole is injected into this region. Hole is injected into region. And then majority of the hole actually slide down this region to be collected in a collector. So this is, this is emitter. And this is space. Okay, we're almost there. So now, so if I follow the description of textbook, I have holes written by open circle, which goes here, which goes here. And then slide down to this region. They are holes. Whereas there are some minority, for example, in P type region, there's always some minority electron, and this minority electron comes fall, falling down. They fall, they fall down here, and then they have some accumulation here. And then some goes this way. Okay? But, of course, number of holes going from left to right is much larger than number of electrons going from right to left. Okay? So, with this, I'm going to draw same thing. It's a depletion region here. P plus N P depletion region here. This is actually figure figure ten point nine in the textbook, but we have holes going all the way and 
this current from here to here, here to here, is current caused by from emitter, and this is hole. So this P stands for, for hole. So it's really the hole, P type, P or a concentration of hole going from emitter to the base region. And then this is current arriving is defined as I C P because it's collector here. Collector and this this collector here. And this is I sub C going up. Okay. So this is emitter here and this is I sub E going in. And some, there's also, there's also electron going this way. So this is I, E, N, right? Uh, emitter current due to electron. And there's also some electron hole going in, going through, going this way to base. So let's just say this is I, B, 2, and <clears throat> There's also electron going this way. This is I B three. I need one more. I B one is actually um, electron going this way. Okay? Lots of, lots of arrows. Sorry, I should actually, I should use actually this, this is, this I should actually draw with red. And finally, I should draw this yellow, I, B3, because this is caused by hole going this way or electron going this way. And this is I, C, N. Right? Because it's a, it's a, it's a current caused by electrons. This all together forms base current. So this is a this is a this is a this is a full picture of full picture of the all the current action going on in transistors. And the rest is actually modeling. You can see that once you accept, this is, uh, once you accept, once, once you accept those terminology, um, IE equals to IEP plus I 
A N. Right? I E P. So emitter current composed of emitter current due to holes and emitter current due to movement of electrons. These are the two components of the emitter current coming from electron, holes, electrons. Likewise, collector current is composed of CP plus ICN. ICP and ICN, some of that is actually the total uh, uh, collector current. And you can sort of see, understand that uh, I EN is much smaller than IEP. Agree? Because we have more holes here, IEP is going this way. It's larger than electron coming from right to left. And ICN, what is ICN? ICN is here. What is ICN? This ICN is electron here. Electron here going from right to left. So this is P-type region. So electron is minority carrier. So the minority carrier going from P region to the collector region, collector P region to base N region is uh, basically the uh, source of ICN. And this ICN under active biasing is usually larger, smaller than ICP. Right? There are some current going this way. There are some current going this way. But all these holes going this way, coming from here to there, you, here we have three. But there's only one. So this is, this is, this is ICN. Okay? And this is, this is ICP. Okay, and this is this is I E N, and this is this is I E P. So basically, you can see that I C N is smaller than, this is larger than this. This is larger than this. So that's, uh, that's all I'm saying. Okay? Under the, of course, under, under the uh, uh, active biasing. And of course, in this configuration, IB is smaller than I emitter current. And this is smaller than I collector current. And here, complete the definition. I B one is I E N. As you can see, I B one is coming from this current. I B two is coming from um, IB, IB2. Let me start with IB3. IB3 is basically the same as ICN. ICN. And IB2 
is basically um, is current flowing into base to uh, replace the replace electron lost uh, electron lost by lost by recombination so so what I mean is that what I mean is that holes are ejected into this N region. And some holes, most of the holes go through, but some holes recombine with electrons because there are, it's an N-type region after all. So there are electrons. And then holes, holes, here holes, holes and electron meets and electron meets meet and they recombine so they 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 annihilate right when electron meets the when the electron meet holes they recombine and they hole come hole come here there's electron so that electron goes into holes and then they disappear forms bond but when electrons are lost, electron must be supply, must be supply from the from this car, uh, lead base. So electron is supply to supplement the hole. Electron lost by recombination with with holes. So that's the that's the, that's the whole action going on in this in this. Um, diode. Okay? So now, in the remaining 10 minutes, I'm going to just write down some equations and then in the next class we will go, we will, uh, in the next class we will actually model all these carrier actions using diffusion equations and so on. But here, just to set up the fundamental sure. efficiency, so that's gamma is defined as I E P I E because I E P. So this is just a ratio of IEP versus IE. So it's efficiency. We collect, we input IE, and we want to know how much of that will actually become IEP. And that's given by this efficiency. And of course, IE is sum of IEP and IEN. So this is a, this is a, this is obviously zero larger than, larger equal than gamma one. And of course, gamma is current gain. So, larger the gamma, larger the current gain. And so, so it, it can be maximized when this is actually become one. Largest gain is obtained when this becomes one. Okay? There's actually base, base transport factor 
which is given by alpha t sub t equals to I C P over I E P for P and P. Okay? Again, this value takes alpha t is between 0 and 1. So large base transport factor, large, uh, so how much of the current is going in here is determined by how many, uh, determined by a fraction of holes that are killed by electron here, recombination with. So holes come in here, and then some of them recombine with electrons in N region. Therefore, holes are lost. And then when holes are lost, electrons are lost here too, so that electrons are supplied from the base. So that's the source of the base current, one of the sources of the base current. So larger the holes making all the way from left to right, which basically is ICP, in a fraction of IEP is actually better, you know, as a as a as a performance performance of the uh, uh, bipolar junction transistor. That's actually better. So, larger the alpha t, bit larger the base transport factor. And finally, I'm going to just uh, write down common. Emitter, so we are we have common emitter case. DC current gain as amplifier. Okay. So I C collector current output collector current is given by beta. DE IB plus ICE zero. Okay, and here beta DC. Sorry, this is DC. Beta DC DC. So it's a common emitter DC. Current gain. So this is this is the uh, this is the uh, common emitter DC current gain and I C E zero is collector current current when base current is zero when base current is zero okay um, we can also work on something else There's another factor called common base DC current gain. Common base DC current gain factor given by alpha DC. Okay, I haven't discussed about common gate, but it's a, so far we've been talking about common emitter, but you can also make the base common to get output. That's actually written in a, in a textbook. But then in this case, 
current is given by alpha dc ie plus I C B O. Okay? Now this is common base, so instead of C E or C zero, this is C B zero. Okay. Then where should I draw? Then because since Since IE is IC plus IB, and putting substituting this into this equation, we are going to substitute this into that. We get IC equal alpha DC IC plus IB. plus I C B zero. And we have we have description for I C here. <coughs> and there. Uh, actually, let me, let me go a step farther. Rearranging this, I can rearrange this to IDC over 1 minus alpha DC IB. This is just rearranging the, uh, this equation. It's the same equation. Plus, I can write down ICB0 divided by 1 minus alpha DC. Okay? So this is just rearranging this equation. So now we compare this equation with this equation. Comparing this equation and this equation, right? We know that beta dc is alpha dc minus 1 minus alpha dc. And, and I see emitter 0 when base current is 0 because this is I C B 0 divided by 1 minus alpha dc. We are almost there. Actually, we are home already. And when um, so this this is really commonly used current gain for the uh, common emitter and common emitter current DC current gain is connected to common uh, base DC current gain. And this formula is used frequently in analysis of the bipolar tr junction transistor. And you can see from here, if I C E O C zero is is zero beta DC is simply IC over IB, which is just simply what is expected for ideal case. Okay, so the, that's, that's the end of introduction to bipolar junction transistor.